Hello and welcome to the world of electronic projects. In this tutorial we'll be covering the basics of circuit building, breadboards, batteries and wiring. Breadboards like these, also known as prototyping boards, are the basic building blocks of electronic circuits. They come, as you can see, in many different sizes, but normally they're named after the number of points or holes that they contain. For our circuits we'll be using this, which is the 400 point breadboard. Why use a breadboard? Well, breadboards are an easy and inexpensive way of testing out electronic circuits again and again without the mess and the heat of soldering. But how does a breadboard actually work? Well, if we can turn it over like this, we can see it has this yellow adhesive backing and this is useful if we want to stick the breadboard down for our projects. If we remove the backing, then we're left with something that looks like this. These are the strips of metal across which electricity is conducted. And if we compare it to the front face of the breadboard, we can see that the breadboard conducts electricity across these sets of five holes, corresponding to here, and across these two lines at the end. Now these lines are known as the power rails, which you might be able to guess from the positive and negative side. Now they conduct electricity across the entire length, which means we can put the power supply or any other component in one end and it will be electrically connected with whatever's in any of these holes. Be aware though that some breadboards, like this 170.1, don't actually have any power rails, in which case it just connects across these sets of five holes. A breadboard looks great, but you might be thinking five rolls isn't a great amount of room to plug stuff in. So how much use can a breadboard be? Well here's where our jumper wires come in. If you can see, these are male to male jumper wires. So each point or each end has a pin to which we can collect two sets of holes. If we plug our jumper wire here, this set of five holes is already connected. If we plug it in here, now a component or power source plugged into this set of five holes is connected to one plugged into this set of five holes and so on. And if we connect it up to the power rails like so, anything connected to this row of holes is now connected to a component in this set of five holes. You can also get wires like this, male to female jumper wires. If you can see here we have a hollow or a hole and here we have a pin. This is useful to connect to things like battery holders where one of the ends is a bit frayed we can strip it down a bit with a Stanley knife plug it in and we have our battery terminal ready to operate. Remember for the circuit to work there has to be a complete circuit without any breaks. If the wires aren't connected properly the electrons can't flow from one end of the circuit to the other so if your circuit's not working it's always worth checking that the wires and the components are connected properly. And now onto types of wire. Stranded wire isn't very useful as you can guess putting together in breadboards. So you're better off with a single core wire. Now we have our canvas but how do we power our components? Basically our circuits use a small charge that comes from a battery. Here we have four triple A batteries each one and a half volts which gives us a 6 volt power supply. Another battery commonly used in electronic circuits for the home projects is this which is a 9 volt battery. Now be sure when checking online projects to make sure which power supply is used because too much power can actually damage components. So that's the basics of building a circuit. Be sure to check out the video called project 1 to see how to bring it all together. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out our other videos and feel free to like, comment and subscribe.